AllSearch is a new way for researchers to make exciting and unexpected discoveries. This is Jennifer Trammell with the Redex team, and I'll be facilitating our session along with Brett Colson. Many of you know Redex as a major publisher of primary sources, like the Archive of Americana, which includes America's historical newspapers, America's historical imprints, and more. Redex also now offers major collections of government documents and newspapers published around the world. Together, these historical collections contain a large variety of document types. You'll find books, broadsides, pamphlets, newspapers, government documents, and other types of documents. Now, using Redex All Search, students and scholars can search seamlessly across all of these Redex digital collections available at their institution. Today, Redex product director Brett Colson will give us an overview of the fully integrated All Search platform. Brett will also discuss its relationship to individual Redex collections and the benefits of cross-searching multiple families of Redex collections. Finally, we'll share some common teaching and research applications. Toward the end, we will certainly have time for your questions. On the right side of your screen, you'll see that gray GoToWebinar control panel. Look for the chat section near the bottom. And if you go ahead and click the plus sign to expand the section, you can type your question into the box and then click the send button. We'll be collecting those questions throughout the training today. During the presentation, you have access to two handouts. Look for the handout section of the gray GoToWebinar control panel. Again, click that plus sign to expand it. You can access those documents now and save them to review later. You have access to a handout on Redex All Search. You can go ahead and share that with students and faculty at your institution, as well as the slides from today's training. We think today's discussion is sure to spur some good ideas, so let's keep the conversation going over on Twitter using the hashtag RedexAllSearch. One final housekeeping note for you. Yes, we are recording today's session, and you will receive a link to that video. Now, before we get started, we'd like to get an idea of who has joined us today. So I'm going to go ahead and put a poll question up on your screen. And let us know which one best describes your role at your institution. Are you a librarian, a faculty member, a student, or something else? Go ahead and let us know there. I see some of those results coming in. And while you're responding, I'll go ahead and introduce Redex Product Direct Director Brett Colson. And Brett's going to be leading our training today. Brett brings a wealth of digital publishing and product management experience. Brett has been with the Redex team for more than eight years and previously studied law and American history. He has taught US history at the college level and his particular expertise is in 19th century social history. Brett, welcome. Thank you, Jen. I'm gonna go ahead and close this poll and get our results here and share those with all of you. Okay, it looks like we have mostly librarians with us, 57% of the audience, a couple of faculty members, and some others as well. So, Brett, now that we know a little bit more about who's with us today, take it away. Well, thank you, Jen. And welcome, everybody, to our session. I want to thank you for taking the time to take your take time away today to spend with us and go through our uh, Redex All Search interface training session. I hope you find it informative and entertaining. What we want to cover today is um, basically we want to begin with an overview of what, what is Redex All Search and why we built it, what are the benefits of the Redex All Search interface, and how does it help users doing research. After that, we'll, actually, what we'll go into the actual interface and look at some of the main features of the interface and do some sample searching. And at the end, as Jen said, we'll also have questions. As we know, we're all in the business of learning. As Neil Armstrong says here, research is creating new knowledge. And as we all know, all learning comes from research. All the textbooks that students are using in their college classes, all the journals that uh, faculty are writing, these are all research, and it's the, game, the end game of research is to create new learning, to help learning the learning process. And a, lot, and a lot of that is what went 
went into the motivation for Redex to launch its new platform we call AllSearch uh, earlier this year. AllSearch provides new features not currently found in the Redex interfaces that you may be familiar with. These features equip researchers with the means to cross-search all Redex collections, the means for better document discovery tools, and make it easier for users to discover expansive and comprehensive research paths, which we'll discuss in a little bit more detail later on. All of this was done to help support research and to help the discovery and learning process of our users. That's what we want to do at the end. That's what we want to do to help our users to have better uh, search experiences in our databases. One of the ways that AllSearch does this is that it breaks down the challenges posed by information silos. And what I mean by information silos is that over the years that I've worked as a product manager, and especially during my years working at Redex, I've often heard from librarians about student research behavior. And librarians often told me that students tended to get what they like to describe as tunnel vision when it came to doing research. And what they meant by that was, was that if a student was doing a research project, they might start out in newspapers, but they may never leave the newspaper database to go find other materials and other collections. That they get for some reason thought that, well, they did all the research they could do, they did all they needed to do in newspapers, and they were done. And they did not realize that there may be other documents or other items or other materials in some other collections that would be very valuable to their research. And in many ways may actually improve their research or enhance their research or help to the learning process when it comes to research. And again, this was an, uh, a process or what librarians call as tunnel vision. And so all search tries to break down that tunnel vision or tries to break down information silos. And how does it do this? Well, first of all, it provides users with the means to be able to discover more documents without doing multiple searches in different databases. If a user goes into a database thinking, I'm only going to do uh, research on newspapers, in all search, they may get new, they'll get newspapers, but they may get other documents from other databases as well, expanding their sort of research horizons around a topic and learning that they don't, that there's more to their topic than just what they're learning in the newspapers. At the same time, as we'll see, uh, there's often the challenge when you have large amounts of information. When you're searching multiple collections, you can get large results lists. And all search also takes that into account and helps users to manage large amounts of information. So they spend more time learning and discovering, reading their documents rather than trying to understand or how to navigate a large results list or large amounts of information. Again, facil better facilitating the learning process. The end goal being better outcomes for our users, better results, better research, better learning. Brett, I think that sounds great for everyone. And at this point, we'd really like to get some feedback. So tell us, do you help students and faculty use digital collections at your institution? Yes, no, or I don't personally, but my colleagues do. Go ahead and tell us where you fall. We're getting some results in here. A few more seconds to respond. All right. And let me go ahead and share those results with you. Most of you do, in fact, help faculty and students use digital collections at your institution or your colleagues do. 77% of you saying, yes, I do. 18% saying, my colleagues do. Brett? Thank you, Jen. That's very interesting. Well, up to this point, what we've been looking at is some of the more general aspects of Redex All Search interface general goals, the general mission, is, so to speak, of what we are trying to accomplish with the Redex All Search interface. But now let's turn a little bit and switch gears and take a little closer look at some of the key benefits and some of the key features, sort of the nuts and bolts, if you will, of the interface. As we mentioned, All Search allows users to search across all available Redex collections at one time on one platform. Uh, at the, up to this point, uh, we didn't have that ability except for what we used to call our Archive of Americana interface. What this means, though, is that in many cases, some users could have easily up to 200 years of historical content and access it through a single search. In some cases, it could be even more than that. For example, if you have an account that has our Afro-Americana imprints collection that goes all the way back to 1535, 
and then they also have our FBIS collection that goes up into the late 20th century. You're talking over 500 years of history that users have access to and they can search against uh, with uh, a single search uh, through uh, Redex All Search, the Redex All Search interface. Moreover, again, going back to what we were talking about uh, with the tunnel vision issue, uh, where users could get focused on one type of document. Now with all search, they have access to all types of documents, a variety of materials, a variety of documents. Users can look at newspapers if they want. They could look at books or pamphlets or periodicals if they want. Or they can look at government records if they want as well and look at these all together. I mean, it all comes back in one comprehensive results list that they can begin to look at different aspects of different uh, features of their research uh, through different types of documents that are available to them through one search, which they may not have thought of before when they first began to do their research, where they might have thought they could only find what they wanted in newspapers or only find what they wanted in old books or pamphlets or something. What this then does, though, to open up, the, open up all these varieties of collections, variety of documents, the ability to search across all these different collections, is it opens up or makes it, able, it, makes it uh, for users to be able to search across different collections, enables users to discover new research paths. And what is it that we mean by new research paths? What do we mean by saying that all search uh, creates new research paths or opens up new research paths for users? Well, first, before we describe that or what, we, what we're saying is, is that we have to also understand, which I think many of us are familiar with, is that one of the challenges with databases such as the Redex collections is the large amount of information that one can get back. If someone goes in and just does a very general search, it isn't uncommon or unlikely that they would get maybe 200,000 results, if not more, in some cases, given the nature of the collections, given the amount of uh, information that's available if they have multiple Redex collections. In many ways, we've learned from many of our librarians that they've told us in feedback over the years that well, oftentimes students don't have the patience to be able to wade through all this information, and it can be like a jungle to them that they have to navigate or traverse, and oftentimes they lack the patience to be able to do that. And so sometimes, as it says here, access to large amounts of documents across numerous collections can present real challenges. They have access to all this information, but now they have to be able to manage it. Well, AllSearch, along with providing access to a variety of collections, also provides tools to allow users to manage large amounts of information or to lar large amounts of data that may come back from their research. Clearing away, so to speak, as a pathway here uh, through the jungle uh, to basically get at relevant topic or relevant documents that are important or germane to their research topic as opposed to maybe be getting sidetracked by documents that, that don't really add much to their research or to the value of the research that they're trying to do. How AllSearch does this, first and foremost, is that it allows users to select the collections that they want to search. They don't have to search everything. If, it, if an account or library has, say, seven Redex collections, a user can search all seven if they want, or they can search two or they can search three. It depends really on what they want to do. And they can make that selection, thus, that, thus limiting the amount of information they get back. For example, if I'm doing research, say, on the 20th century, I have no need for collections that only cover the 19th century. So I could limit my search right away by eliminating those collections from my search that only come up to, say, maybe the, the 19th century. Or if I'm looking at World War II, I don't want anything past uh, the early 20th century. So again, right off the bat, uh, all search provides me a mean before I even do my search to be able to limit the amount of information I get back if I say I don't need to have everything. After I've done my search, all search also provides tools to allow me to sort my results. Users are able to sort results by their date. They say we only want a certain time period I want to look at. I'm only interested in a certain date or a certain event in a certain time period. They can look at it by collection. They might want to say, well, I'm interested in a certain perspective that's only going to come, out, come, come through uh, by a specific type of collection. Or they may say, well, I'm not really interested in just general coverage. I want official coverage. So I'm not interested in newspapers. I might only want government documents. And so they can then sort by document type. Or they might say, I want to start off with general information. So I'm going to look first at newspapers. But then I'm going to turn to much more of uh, 
official type of coverage of my event, and that way then I can select on document type. So all search enables uh, several features to allow users to manage not only to do uh, effective searching across a large amount of, uh, of information or collections, but also information that comes back uh, through a variety of tools that we've discussed. Now putting this all together, the value, what, what, what put recapping or summarizing the value, I'm putting this all together. Uh, one, search all of Redux collections at once. All search allows you to do that. All search also allows you to manage large amounts of information. In general, what this does then is it saves time for users. It also leads to better research outcomes, which we'll hope, I'll hope to illustrate here in a minute. Let's just develop and let's look at an example of, of all this to see how this all pulls together. Let's just say we have a student in fact, she's taken an American history class focusing on the Civil War, and she decides that she has to write a term paper for this class, and that she decides that she wants to write her term paper on Sherman's March. She approaches and she comes into the All Search uh, database and types in the term Sherman's March and runs her search. Now, she's initially beginning her search with the impression that she's just going to write another historical account of the historical event like many have done before, where there would just be a term paper saying, you know, Sherman's March, Sherman March to the Sea, had a major impact on bringing the Civil War to an end, looking at it from that historical perspective. <clears throat> so she goes into the database and she finds, she finds materials, and she begins and she pulls up first an account from Serial Set, which gives, in this case, an example here of an official account of Sherman's March that helps in that historical account of the event. But after she reads through that, she begins to go back into her results list and begins to notice that there's things like pamphlets or broadsides that come back with her search terms on. And she gets curious and she says, well, wait a minute, what else is this? What, 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 why would there be a pamphlet or why would there be a broadside coming back for Sherman's March? She pulls that up and she begins to see now that there's posters or broadsides that have songs or include songs of poetry talking about Sherman's March. And she begins to realize now that Sherman's March goes beyond just the historical event, that there's more to it than just it's this historical event that occurred towards the end of the Civil War. Now there's something more. It comes to a much more cultural aspect to it, being immortalized in song and poetry. And she sees this because now she was in all search, and she was only initially looking for official information, but now she's found more, and she begins to realize that there's more to the story than just Sherman March to the Sea at the end of the Civil War. And a little more research that she does, she learns that alt at Sherman's March as a term evolved as a modern day sports euphemism for sports broadcasting and sports reporting becomes a term to talk about a, winning, a team having a winning, winning season. At this point, she realizes that she can now produce a paper that goes beyond the norm, that goes beyond just being a historical account of the historical event. She actually can bring in a whole new perspective on Sherman's March and its meaning and implication in American history. And this is what we mean by better research, better learning. Um, and as this picture here, we like to refer to this as a light bulb moment, where you have a new idea that you can actually contribute now that there's more learning to Sherman's March than this understanding that Sherman's March was an event that occurred during the Civil War. All through the bill, all through the features provided to you. Uh, through the all search interface. So at this point I'm going to turn at the actual interface and we'll do a walkthrough um, and I think Jen has a few things that she wants to bring up. Sure, so while Brett's getting over to the resources there, go ahead and tell us when students use digital resources, how do you think they generally find them? Does it come after a conversation with a librarian? Are they directed to certain resources by faculty members? on the library homepage, through a discovery service, or some other way? What's been your experience? We'll give everyone a few more seconds to respond. OK, take a look at these results. Hold on just a minute. It looks like a lot of students are finding resources through discovery services. Sometimes they're directed there by faculty, maybe on the library homepage or after talking with a librarian. All right, and Brett's going to go ahead and show us the Redux All Search interface at this point and some examples of different searches. Brett? 
Thank you, Jen. And that, that, that information is very interesting to us. <clears throat> All right, what we're looking at here is the default landing page for the Redex All Search interface. This would be the page that you would come to when you first come into All Search uh, to do your search. As you can see, it's a very simple search, very sleek looking page. All we have is our simple search box here in the middle. I'll just scroll down here again to show that we have some examples of documents or images that a user could expect to receive from doing a research and doing research uh, within the All Search database. So again, we have newspapers, uh, pamphlets, maps, different types of document sets uh, that are all available through searching uh, within All Search. Before I actually do run a search, I just want to point out, and then we'll talk about this in a little bit, um, if you were interested in doing a much more specific or advanced search, we do have an advanced search feature here, which I just want to point out to everybody, and we will talk about that in a little bit. But I still wanted to stay with this page right now, and want to begin to go back to when we were talking about uh, some of the key features that all, all search uh, provides students in doing their search. We talked about the ability to select collections. Um, right here, before right, right before we get to our search box here, you'll see our collection selection feature. And if I just go ahead and click on that, as you can see, you scroll down. Uh, that'll highlight or list all the collections that are currently available to your institution. As you can see here, I have uh, 26 databases selected on my account, and you can see here that we have uh, all the different collections of, listed here. And you can either have them select all or go down and select the ones that you're interested in. So you don't have to have them all. You can have a few. You can have one, two, three, or you can have half of them or three quarters. Uh, whatever it is that you would, whatever would meet your research needs at the given moment. The other feature that's important with this uh, collection selection view is that we're, what we're looking at here is the brief view. This is just a list of the titles. And as we often hear that many students won't understand, well, you just tell them American State Papers or what these names are, don't necessarily mean a lot to students. What you can show them, though, is that when next to brief, we have what we call the detailed view. And if I click on that, what it does is it opens up uh, more information for each of these collections. So now you still have the name of the collection, but you also have the years that are covered. You also have some general information, some key stats about each collection. that just gives you some more information about what can be found in these particular collections. And again, the idea just to be to give uh, students and researchers a little more information about what it is they're searching or what it is about what about they're about to begin searching, uh, so they can have some idea of what they may want to select or not select. And again, it goes back to my example: if I was only searching for events in the 20th century, I may say, well, if there's only events here, collections that go up to 1800, I don't really need to see that. And this view allows me to begin doing that. It also has a little uh, product icon as well, to, again, to help illustrate uh, the collection, to identify the collection within the list. Now, the, for, for the purposes of our demonstration today, I'm going to keep all the 26 databases uh, on, I'm gonna, on my uh, all search interface. I'm going to search against all of those. Now, let's just say that I've come to the database and I want to do a search on the term Sultana. And the reason I want to do the search on the search on the uh, search on the term Sultana is because I learned in my history class, and partly to keep the Civil War motif going, but partly because I learned that this week is the 151st anniversary of the Sultana disaster. And as many of you may be aware, the Sultana was a, a riverboat that blew up on the Mississippi River right at the end of the Civil War, uh, killing a lot of people, unfortunately. Uh, and it was probably one of the, I think it was I, I may be wrong in this, but I think it was the worst maritime disaster prior to the Titanic because nearly about 1,500 people died in the explosion, which I think was comparable to the number of deaths on the Titanic. But nonetheless, I come to the database and I think, well, I want to learn more about this event in, in U.S. history. And I come in and all I really do remember, though, is the term Sultana. And I go ahead and click on search and I'll hit go. <clears throat> And after I select go, it brings us then into our results list. What I want to point, bring our attention to first is, as you can see, just joining a, a search on the term Sultana across 26 databases has brought back over 100,000 results. And again, a very large results list. And so if I was a typical student who was feeling like, well, I don't have a lot of time, that could be a rather manageable 
uh, result list to begin dealing with. But as you can see, I did, I only, I did across uh, 26 results. What I want to begin looking at is I don't really need to do anything in terms of my search at this point to really get a much more uh, focused result set. As I can say, you can look over here, we have our narrow results by. These are our results filters here on the left. And you can begin to filter your results uh, by document type, in this case, government documents, imprints, or newspapers, or even by databases. You may say, well, I'm only interested in certain database, uh, a certain perspective from a certain database that I'd be interested in, and you could go down and select that database which you are interested in uh, looking, uh, having results just from that one. So I might say I'm only interested in the Civil War database uh, related to that, our congressional serial set. I could select those as well. At the same time, I might realize, well, you know, I'm interested in a specific time period. I'm not really interested in just Sultana in general. I'm interested in a specific event, event that has occurred at a specific time. And so here I can begin to look at the dates ranges and I can begin to fill, I can begin to think about filtering on a specific date range or a specific year. Before we do that, I want to go back up to the top here. I want to point out here that we are sorting our results on best matches first. That is the default sort. Uh, there is a reason for that within a, a cross-search database like this because experience has taught us that if you don't default to best matches first, if we say we went to chronological, if we have a database that seriously predates other databases, then that, that the, the results list will always be front loaded with those uh, collections, that collection, and those documents. So best matches first will bring up a variety of different collections usually uh, right off the bat that you can begin to work through. As I work down through the list, you'll see we have our little icons along the right side here. Uh, these are there to help begin determine or discern what, the, what this material is. Uh, we have our government docs icon. Um, this is our newspaper icon here that tells you that that's a newspaper result. And we also have an icon for our print, imprints, or book collections as well to show you that it's a monograph or some type of book uh, type of document. So as I begin to look through my results list here, as I said before, I notice that I have a good, a large amount of results. I want to be, I begin to navigate through my results list, and while I realize that I got some good results. I don't really have anything that pertains to the actual event that I'm interested in. In fact, I begin to realize that I have documents that have nothing to do with the Sultana explosion. I have documents that talk about horse racing or other individuals. I do have a document here, however, that talks about a commemoration of the Sultana event, uh, which is a good document to keep in mind, but nonetheless, it's not really what I'm looking for because I'm mainly interested in actual specific information around the event. So the first thing I can do is I say, well, I remember it happened right at the end of the Civil War. I remember the Civil War ended in 1865. So I'll come back down here to where I have my years filter here, and I can just scroll down through until I get to 1865, see all the different years of coverage, lots of years of coverage here. But I can say, okay, I only want those documents from the year 1865, and I can just go ahead and click on that. And now that brings me into a results list that has only documents or publications uh, from 1865. And as we can see, uh, that we now are having documents that pertain to the actual event that I've narrowed in now on the actual event that I'm interested in as I look down through, through uh, my results list here. So let's say I see, okay, I've got some documents, I've got some articles that I'm interested in. Um, the second article looks pretty good. It gives me some idea of how many lives were lost. Let me take a look at that to get some uh, general information around the event. So I can go ahead and click on the title. And then that brings us into our new image viewer that we now have available in our all search uh, interface. But for those of you that are familiar with our Redex products at this currently, you realize you'll see the difference now uh, in this new image viewer that we have. Uh, that we have in all search. Very different than what's currently available in our current products. Right off the bat, um, we have your basic features that you can use to navigate or to magnify. We have our mag mag we can magnify the image or we can reduce that image. We also have a navigation box if you want to use that to move around in the image. We have it right here in the right. 
You can also still use your mouse to scroll through the image if you want to use your mouse to position the image in any way that you want. As you can see, as we currently have support, we have the, high, the terms highlighted within the document image. But we also have one other feature that we don't currently have in our Redex collections, and that's the full screen feature. Um, if you want to see this in a full screen uh, image, you could go ahead and click on the full screen, and then you could then scroll or increase it so that you could see the entire image uh, in full screen mode. Again, helping the user to be able to read, read the document rather than being having to adjust the magnification. We still have our table of contents available if you want to, but at the same time you'll see there's a little arrow there that you can remove it and expand this, the image viewer screen on your page at that point. At the top of the image we have our title, we have our citation information, we have more of that citation information over here on the right, and you'll see just below that we have it says see full details, if you click on that you'll see all the citation information displayed below the image. And this will begin for, for citation purposes, uh, all the key metadata uh, for this document. Along with that we have our various features such as download pages. If you want to download the issue in which this document or this article is included, you could do that and click there. We also have our print feature. We also have our email feature. If you want to email this uh, link to this document to, for yourself to use on a different computer or to access from a different computer, you could do that. We also have citation information. What we've provided in this case is the ability to format uh, based on MLA and APA styles. One of the things that we learned in doing our research for all search was that the need for students to be able to understand how to cite or to format their citations based on typical style guidelines that are used uh, in college campuses across the country. And we, MLA and APA tend seem to be the most important ones or the most used ones. And so we provided means saying if you're uh, want to cite to a newspaper from a Redex database, we provide you an example of that uh, down here where it shows you how to cite uh, a MLA style or APA style. Also provide that for other document types such as inprints or even in government documents down here at the bottom, such as serial set. And if you wanted to download a copy of this image as a PDF, uh, you could do that as well. You could provide that feature as, um, in the database for your use as well. So let's just say that I've done all my research in newspapers on the Sultana that I like, that I've got the basic information, but now I want to turn to much more official type of information. I go back to my results and say, okay, I've looked at the newspaper information I want, but now I want more official information on the Sultana. I can go back here and in my document types, I can click on government document. And that brings back at the back the five government documents that came back from my search on Sultana. And I can go ahead here at the top and I'll go ahead and click on the title and then that will bring us into the publication view. And again, this is a document coming from our serial set collection. And if I want to look at the term, the switch terms, I can scroll through my uh, table of contents. You can see here where we highlighted where the search terms appear within the publication. And if I go ahead and click on that, it'll take me right to the page. And as you can see now, that there's an official accounting of the investigation after the Sultana disaster uh, published by the government in, ser in the serial set uh, back at, in late 1865. So now just in all search I was able to do not just research on the event as it was covered by newspapers but I was also then able to switch gears and get official information much after the fact of the of the event to get some of this information around uh, the Sultana, the history of the Sultana, the ship it was, who owned it, how many lives were lost, some of the statistical information to help reinforce and to strengthen the research of the event as it was covered in the newspaper. 
And again, you can see we have the citation information uh, for our serial set collection materials in LSEARCH at the top, just like we do with newspapers. And if you wanted to see the full citation, uh, again, you would just jump down below the image there um, as well, just as we saw before. Now let's just say that I want to switch gears. I say, all right, I have to jump to another class. I'm taking on 20th century U.S. history, and now I have to. I want to go work on a project on, on 20th century uh, history, primarily maybe around the Cold War. What I can do is I go back up here to the top. You'll see it has new search. If I click on that, that'll take me back to my search page, where then it's empty, and then I have I'm free to open up or start a new search. In this case, I want to do advanced search because I'm not interested in searching everything because, again, I'm focusing on the 20th century. I don't really need any 19th century materials. So let's go. We can go into my search, advanced search page. You can see we can scroll down here. We have the uh, collection selection view right on the page that you can select what you want to search against or not search against. But I'm not going to worry about that because I have other features here. As you can see, different fields that I can fill in to tell what the system what to search. And as we know, the more information we give the system, the more specific the search will be. So in this case, I'm interested on the Eisenhower administration during the Cold War, in particular the Dulles, Dulles uh, Secretary of State and his position on Cold War on, during the Cold War during the 1950s. So I'm going to go ahead and search on Brinkmanship and Dulles. And I'm also going to search on the date range which I'm going to enter here, as you can see on the right here, the date field box. Um, so I'm going to search on the term brinkmanship and Dulles during 1955 to 1965. And I just go ahead and click on go. And as you can see, that we brought back over 300 results. We got both newspapers and government documents or government records in this collection, in this results list. And as I scroll down through, I can see my results, the terms that I used. But let's just say that I don't have, I, I don't want to, I don't need all 300 results, and I want to limit my results or get much more focused results at least to start. If you go back up to the top here where I had the new search button, you'll see just next to that it'll say Edit Search. I can edit my search from this page by just clicking on that. That'll take me back. And in this case, I want to search on Dulles and Brinkmanship and put those and just search on where those names or those terms appear in the title of documents. So I change my field, so now I'm going to have a much more focused search because I'm only going to search for those documents that have these terms in their titles. And I go ahead and click on search or go. And as a result of that, I, re I get three results, and I was able to reduce my results from 300 down to three, and again, very focused, very specific result set that I was able to glean from a much larger result set just by making some small adjustments uh, to my search strategy using the tools from AllSearch. Well, that covers what the walkthrough. Um, Jen, if you have anything else? Great, thank you, Brett. Thanks for showing us some examples from different time periods as well. So based on your experience, which period are students most interested in researching right now? Do you find they're enjoying studying the 18th century, 19th century, 20th century? What seems to be popular at your institution? We have some results coming in here. A few more seconds to respond. Okay, it looks like research on the 19th century is most popular, 53% of our audience responding with that. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at any questions that have come in during this time. First of all, Brett, we want to say thank you for walking us through Redex All Search. You've really shown us how this helps users make those new and sometimes unexpected discoveries, like with that example from Sherman's March to the Sea. If you haven't submitted a question yet using the chat box in the gray GoToWebinar control panel, it's not too late. You can go ahead and do that on the right side of your screen.
Now is also a great time to download those handouts. Remember, you have access to a Redex All Search flyer that you can share with students and faculty members at your institution. Brett, could you tell us a little bit about the difference between Redex All Search and Archive of Americana? Previously, some people might have used Archive of Americana as a way to search across different collections. How is this different? Yes, thanks, Jen. Um, yes, Redex All Search interface is different from the Archive of Americana in two major ways. The first way is that All Search allows you to search all Redex collections, regardless whether they're from the early 19th century or the later 20th century. As many of you may know, the Archive of Americana does not allow you to search across FBIS or JPRS. It's just that earlier select sort of uh, selections of newspapers and government documents. So there's some a uh, limitation there of Archive Americana that re, uh, Redex All Search um, does address. And so in this case, uh, All Search is clearly a, a much more comprehensive uh, cross search tool for Redex collections. Secondly, the other second area in which it's, uh, All Search is different uh, from Archive Americana is that if you remember, the Archive of Americana provides a bucketed results list. And by bucketed, I mean simply that the results were organized based on collection. You would get the five top results from each collection in your results list. And if you wanted to look at the results or look at the, uh, the overall results for each collection that you searched against, you would then be taken out of the archive on a search and taken right directly to uh, that collection. So for example, if I ran a search like I did earlier on Sherman's March and I got documents from newspapers and documents from serial set, and I clicked on the serial set result, that would take me right into the serial set interface, and then I'd have to go back to Ar Archive of Americana to get back to the newspapers if I want to switch to that. Uh, Redex All Search is much more integrated, or is integrated, in that you, you do it all in the one interface. Um, at the same time, you're not just restricted to the top five. Uh, you get everything all in one results list. Great, thank you, Brett. We have another question here. What is the easiest way to get a permanent link to a document that you found? Can you walk us through that? Uh, there's a bookmarking feature, but you also the link on the document that you see at the top of your page is a permanent link. And if you make a copy of that, you can use that in any of the documents that you might send out or in whatever you want to use it for. So. And can you talk about any charges for all search? There's no charge for all search. All search is given is given to all our Redex customers, and that allows them to cross search the uh, collections that their institution subscribes to. Yes, yep. It's a, it's it's whatever the institution has. If you have uh, newspapers and imprints, you can search newspapers and imprints. If you have newspapers, imprints, and serial set, you'll be able to search newspapers, imprints, and serial set. It's just what the what's the what the institution currently has. And Brett, what's the process for getting access to All Search, for turning it on, if you will? What should customers do? Uh, reach out to either customer service at Redex or their sales representative, and then they can have that done for you. Great. So either your customer service or sales representative at Redex can help you turn on All Search for your institution. Yep. Brett, we'd like to thank you again for taking the time to walk us through Redex All Search, and thank you to everyone for attending today's training session. As soon as we conclude, you will receive a short survey. We certainly value your feedback, and your responses really help us make sure we're providing useful and engaging webinars and training sessions. If we did not get to your question today or to ask Redex a question at any time, go ahead and email us, redexmarketing at redex.com. Thank you again, Brett, and thanks to everyone for being here today. Thank you.